Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live session today. Today, I have the honor to introduce to you guys Lynette Long with SSM Health St. Anthony's. Um, she is a licensed professional counselor with over 25 years of experience, and today she's going to share her strategies for stress management during the holiday season. So without further ado, I'll give you guys Miss Lynette Long. Hi, and thanks for having me today. I think it's really a timely topic um, that we're going to be discussing today. I'm really excited to be here with you. So let's get started. So really, let me see how to move my slides here. Just one second. Okay, there we go, so the arrow. Okay, perfect. All right, a little technologically challenged this morning, but so let's talk a little bit about what is stress. So stress is really a state of mental or emotional strain or tension, but there's really two types of stress. So we really don't talk a lot about youth stress. Youth stress is really what I call the good stress. It really helps us to be more productive. And it's really all about um, desirable events in our lives, like things like weddings and the birth of a new baby, a new relationship that you've just started, a holiday or a vacation, a new job, even retiring or buying a new home can be a stressful situation. But they're considered good stress, so it's called youth stress. So then we have what we really what we think of when we think of stress is the distress. And that really has a lot of negative implications. So when we're talking about things like lately with COVID, like a furlough or being laid off or the breakup of a relationship, or you know somebody has to move that you were in a relationship with, that can be stressful. Financial challenges, uh, legal problems, the death of a significant other in your life, um, or a major personal injury um, for you or um, a spouse or another family member. Those all have negative implications and can be seen as something that causes you distress. And so that's really what we're going to be talking more about today is distress. So there are several ways or several things that we see um, as far as signs and symptoms of stress are concerned. And so there are really four areas that we look at when we're looking at um, signs and symptoms. I am not sure. Is, are you guys seeing the, are, you're seeing me, but are you seeing the, the slides? Are you seeing the slides? No, okay, I want, you, I want you guys to be able to see the slides too. Uh, okay, perfect. All right, so um, some signs and symptoms of stress. And you can, you can see that there's four main areas here. So in the physical realm, you might um, see things that really kind of remind you of a heart attack. You might have chest pain or a rapid heartbeat, some rapid breathing, um, gastrointestinal kinds of problems like diarrhea, nausea, constipation, and upset stomach. Things that um, are muscular like a stiff neck and tight shoulders. Um, you might see also a loss of even sexual desire or ability. Um, things that, um, like TMJ, where you have a clenching of your jaw and um, it's sore a lot, or you could even have cold or sweaty hands. Those are just some of the, the physical types of symptoms of stress that you could see. And then there's cognitive symptoms, like you could constantly worry about things, you could have racing thoughts, you could get really forgetful or disorganized even. You know, you forget where you left your keys or where you laid your purse down um, in the morning before you go to work and you're running around the house trying to find all of your things that you need. You could have an inability to focus at work, um, making things take a lot longer for you to complete them. You could, in general, be way more pessimistic instead of optimistic. Um, and then in the behavioral section, you could maybe have a change in appetite. Now that could either be eating more or eating less, and you could see weight gain or weight loss. 
Um, you could start having a problem with procrastination and not getting work or homework done. You could start avoiding responsibilities, um, and you could even start using alcohol, drugs, um, or other things like that um, as a, as your own um, basically way to to deal or. Um, um, you, you feel like you're helping for the moment, but you're not. It's it's kind of a short-term fix. Um, you could also see changes in mood. So this is where in behavioral medicine we see a lot of things like anxiety um, and depression. You could become really irritable and agitated and just overall feelings of being overwhelmed and just having a difficult time um, relaxing. Oops. It's, my slide's not, I need help again, technical, I need technical help again. Thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right, there we go. So there are lots of effects on stress uh, um, on our bodies. So 43% of all adults suffer some sort of adverse health effects from stress. 75 to 90% of all doctor's visits are even stress related. Um, and the lifetime prevalence of an emotional disorder is more than 50%. Um, and it's really often due to chronic and untreated stress reactions. So there's a lot of different types of problems that are related. Obviously, again, we go back to the, the cardiovascular, the gastrointestinal problems. You can have high blood sugar, high blood pressure. You're even really at an increased risk of stroke and heart attack. Your immune system is weakened when you're stressed out. Of course, and getting the anxiety and depression on the on the um, mental health side of the equation. So all these are issues that you really need to consider being seen by your primary care provider for, um, or even by a specialist um, like a cardiologist or a psychiatrist. Um, and for acute or even chronic kinds of um, cases of depression, we can sometimes see those people actually become suicidal. And in those instances, it's best to complete a risk assessment to determine an appropriate level of care to see if you just need to, you know, have some support services um, like an intensive outpatient or an outpatient and maybe medication management by your primary care physician or whether or not you might need an inpatient um, uh, stay to help get you past that, that time in your life. So, um, and it's SSM Health, we actually do... Um, have the ability for you to talk to um, a licensed mental health professional if you need one. And you can do that by just simply calling 713-5706 and they can do a virtual assessment for you if you're not sh really sure what level of care you might need if you're having some mental health issues. Um, so now that we've gone over really what stress is and the difference between eustress and distress and the signs and symptoms of stress, let's talk about some effective ways to manage it. Okay, I'm going to get this technology piece down here in a second. <laughs> I need lots of tech help today. Okay, so really the first thing that we need to do is it's tis the season to manage your time. So I've actually learned as I've gotten older um, that our time and really our love are the most precious commodities that we have to offer. So with that in mind, it's absolutely and positively okay to say no to doing extra things that you know that would stress you out, that you don't feel like you have time for. Number two, keeping a to-do and a to-purchase list with you. This is really just to help keep you organized and time efficient so you don't end up doing last minute trips to Target or worrying about whether or not that last gift is going to be delivered on time. And then, you know, you should really schedule some time for extra tasks, but do the things that nobody else can do but you first and then prioritize those obviously and then delegate household tasks like loading the dishwasher, um, doing laundry, you know, kids can help with those, your significant other can help with those as well um, and then make sure obviously that you thank them for their help but prioritize and, and do the things that, that only you can do first. 
So, and then schedule some time for relaxation because that's what we don't do um, enough of. We do need the time for a hot shower, a bubble bath, to read a good book, something like that. But some, so schedule some time in for yourself. Okay, so then plan early, obviously. Organize yourself and your kids' schedule if you have it with a calendar. Um, calendars are fantastic. And um, it's also a great way so that everybody in the whole family knows what you've got going on. So there's no question about, you know, the kids or somebody asking to do something else on Saturday night because they know that you're, you're you know, all going to go look at Christmas lights that night. So scheduling things on a calendar are really um it helps preparation and it helps cut down on procrastination. And it also helps us ensure that we're not overbooking ourselves. So turning off the television and unplugging from social media, I really can't tell you how much I, you know, suggest doing this right now because we're just constantly bombarded with a lot of negative news and a lot of scary stuff actually right now. So just unplugging from that for a little bit. Um, it's, it's really never good for us to continually or constantly be watching things that are um, turmoil or chaos or negativity. Our brain is actually really wired to tune more into those kinds of things. Um, and the more you t pay attention to them, uh, the more you notice that they're there. And so it's kind of like the hamster. You need to get off the wheel for a while and do a media detox if you can, even if it's just for a day. And then, you know, avoiding peak shopping times, um, you know, on the weekend and after five, Monday through Friday, if you can shop online, that's, that's great. Um, or using gift cards and, and money, that's also, um, a good way to avoid some stress, um, this holiday season. And, um, you know, just overall avoid the hassle of being a last minute shopper. So if you can get out and get your shopping done early, you know, that's really the best thing to do. I'm sure Amazon is super busy, and so the other thing is just going ahead and, and getting those things done, things that you do know that you're going to order online. Go ahead and order those so that you can have them, and you can get them wrapped, and, and it's, it's checked off your list to do. So t schedule time for holiday fun. This is really so important. Um, I think a lot of th uh, times right now, especially since COVID, we have really, um, really gotten away from a lot of our established holiday traditions and it's really important especially for kids if you have them um, and family members to continue to do the things that you used to do um, to provide some stability in the family so um, if you're used to getting the christmas tree out and decorating it you need to go ahead and do that um, you know a fun a thing to do um, is making ornaments or making gingerbread houses. And then something that uh, some families do, you, you might not get to go Christmas caroling this year, but you could still get in the car with every one in the family and, um, and go look at a light display. So those are still available. And fun things to do. So make sure you're scheduling time for, for holiday fun. So managing your resources. Um, Obviously, you know, making a budget, making a list of who you want to give gifts to, and setting a limit on spending with family and friends can be important. Um, but you should really remember that gifts don't have to be expensive. It's really the thought that counts. Um, so think back really to what people said all year that they were interested in or having, um, or things that they'd absolutely love. Like, I have a thing about wearing fuzzy socks in the winter. so. Um, and I absolutely positively love them. So those are really an inexpensive thing, but it's something that if someone knew me, it would be a very thoughtful type of gift. Um, just in general, listening to people and paying attention is a great way to notice things that they, that they like and love. Obviously, so downsizing and having a secret Santa, uh, downsizing in the sense that if you're a family, you could just, um, you know, pull, you know, and, and um, just pick one person that you're all giving a gift to and then still everybody gets something, but you're not having to buy 10 gifts, you're just buying one, um, or doing secret Santas at work, that's also great. 
um, and making gifts. Some of the some of my very favorite gifts in the whole wide world have been um, gifts that were made for me. Um, my dear friend Nola just potted some amaryllis bulbs this year, and so she gifted me one, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's sitting on my kitchen table. My mother has painted like lots of different candles and things for me that I've absolutely loved, and my friend Kim this year gave me some. Um, she started her own homemade business, and she gave me, which is named Sugared and Spiced, if anybody wants to know that. She gave me hot chocolate balls and some really yummy cookies and toffee. So gifts do not have to be expensive, and it's a way to manage your resources, and you'll actually be less stressed later on. So don't be shy. Ask for a list from people. Be creative. It's okay to ask people what they're interested in having. Um, for my kids, I always gave them a spending limit. So when they gave me suggestions, they knew whether or not it was really going to be in their budget of what I was willing to spend for the holidays. So this was super helpful because it took the stress away from them asking for things that were way too expensive or something that, you know, was just outrageously expensive that I probably wasn't going to get them anyway. So um, we need to remember that we need to try to stay away from credit cards. The most of the time overspending comes at the holidays and it can be really tempting, but remember it has to be paid off and then you're adding that interest charge to what what uh, what you're having to pay back for the item. So a better plan is really to start in January of 2021 and then monthly put back a certain amount and that you want to spend next year for the holidays. And spending, so spending savings is really better than creating debt, obviously. Um, and it's really been an incredibly stressful, you know, year for people um, facing the pandemic. So with the change in the economy and the adjustments to sheltering in place and having kids stay at home for homeschooling. So remember this year what you're thankful for. Um, remember why we celebrate the holidays. Um, and focus on activities, not just gifts, to help reduce the final, financial stress that people are feeling right now. So, these, those were all like kind of things you already kind of, you know, obviously knew, but it's just a helpful reminder. It's also a great thing to exercise. So obviously, if you don't have an exercise program already, you know, it, it's great to go see your PCP and make sure that everything checks out so that you can start an exercise program. But exercise of any kind is going to elevate your mood. So a brisk 20 to 30 minute walk can have the same effect really, effect really as a mild tranquilizer. And it releases endorphins. And the, the idea is the higher it, that your endorphins are, the greater sense of calm and well-being you're going to have. Um, yoga is one of the most amazing um, things that you can do. Um, a study was done at Jefferson University and it identified that just one yoga se session can reduce cortisol levels. And um, in a lot of other studies, it showed that exercise took took a little longer. It took some time to build up, but in with yoga, it just literally took one session, and people had a greater sense of you know well being. So mindful walking is a really great technique that you can use. And so it's a great way to clear your mind. You can do it during the day. You can do it in a short walk um, from one office to another, to the other side of the building, if you're working or you know when you're out walking the dog. Mindful meditation walking is simply this. You are just going to pay attention to your footsteps. So as you walk, one, two, one, two. For every footstep, you just count one, two, one, two. And you can also think of the number in your mind if that's helpful. You're really just trying to clear your mind and not think of anything else. If you find that your mind is wandering, then just be gentle with yourself and just say, oh well, and start again. One, two, one, two. So mindful walking is a great way to be present in the moment and recenter you. So it's really important to eat healthy during the holidays because it seems like there's so much out there, uh, cookies and candies and all that kind of stuff, but we really need to be well hydrated. So focus on drinking plenty of water 
if you need to carry around uh, some sort of ca container, that's that's okay. Avoid snacking on sugar-filled substances. Um, it's helpful for our waistline and it, it'll prevent the stress of gaining weight and then having to turn around and lose it later. Eating foods that are obviously nutrient dense, organic and health, healthy types of food are really good for you at any time. Um, and think about, you know, did it grow on a tree? Did it grow in the ground? Um, those are the easier types of food for your body to process. So it puts less stress on your body um, to digest it. Um, so think about things uh, like foods that are like high in antioxidants and to find a list of those foods and spices um, that you can enjoy. You can just Google ORAC levels. Um, ORAC stands for Oxygen Radical Absorbance Capacity and that was developed by the National Institute of Health and those also help um, reduce your stress level, um, the increase in the antioxidants. Things like cinnamon and clove and turmeric are high in antioxidants. So those are all really great things to kind of consider right now. So another great thing that you can do to help reduce your stress is to do a little exercise of visualization. So this is a very simplistic kind of exercise. All you need to do is close your eyes, think about a memory of something you enjoyed, which promoted a sense of relaxation, or you could think about something that brought you just joy and laughter. So like, you know, a, a grandchild at their dance recital, you could just close your eyes and think about that and kind of bring back that moment. The key really to visualization is to try to make the sensation as real as possible. So if you're, example, if you're thinking about a walk on the beach, you'd close your eyes and you'd imagine how the sand felt beneath your feet. You would try to feel the warm sunshine on your skin and that mild breeze blowing um, across your face. Um, the sensation may be of water washing over your toes and up your ankles as the tide comes in. And you can imagine even what the salt water might taste like if you were swimming in the ocean. And then you'd want to try to hear the sounds that were also associated with it, like the waves blowing up on the beach or maybe the seagulls chirping in the background. So the only warning about this visualization is, is that your brain is really hardwired to have that same biochemical response from the original event. So don't pick something like that you thought was a beautiful, wonderful memory, like a wedding, um, because it was, again, filled with um, some level of stress that was associated with it. So you want, you want something that you associate with relaxation or fun um, to visualize. So we're going to learn, I'm going to teach you a really quick breathing exercise that will help reduce your stress. So this is called the four by four technique, and it's very simple. Um, when you breathe in, remember in all breathing techniques, I like this one, you'll want to always breathe in your nose, and then you want to breathe out your mouth. And when you take a breath in, most of the time during the day, we are breathing very shallow and we're breathing up in our chest. So what you want to do is you want to push that breath all the way down into your diaphragm. So you'll breathe in and you'll see your chest rise, but I also want you to focus on your belly and you can even put your hand on your belly and watch your belly rise as well. Um, just mainly this is because we just breathe too shallow. So when you breathe in, again, through the nose, out through the mouth, you're gonna slowly take that deep breath in to a count of four, you're gonna hold it to the count of four, you're gonna release your breath slowly again to the count of four, and then relax to the count of four before you start that sequence again. You can take a regular breath if you need to in between the sequence, but really you want to try to do it rhythmically, and so you wanna do this for about two or three minutes. So really quickly, let's just do one sequence. You just inhale through your nose, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, release, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. And then you just do it over and over again until you hit about two or three minutes. And that's a great, really quick, what I call like a mindful minute or two to just get reset, regrounded, and bring you back into the present moment. 
So, tis the season to laugh and be merry. Laughter does such great things for the body. It oxygenates your cells. It relieves stress. It strengthens the immune system. It releases endorphins. It improves blood circulation. There's so many, many, many wonderful things. Um, and there's so many benefits of laughter that we should all do it several times a day. So, watching a great comedy right now. Um, that's lighthearted. And just remember, you don't have to take life so seriously every moment of the day. So increase your laughter to help reduce your stress. And then think positively. Change your attitude about life and changing the way you think can really drastically reduce your stress levels. So one of my favorite quotes is by Dr. Wayne Dyer, who said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. And when you change your attitude and the lens of how you're seeing the world in a more positive way, and when your intentions are to find the good in life, then you transform yourself and it will reduce your stress. So things you can do to help with this transformation are to write positive affirmations every day, engage in positive types of self-talk, which can be as simple as saying to ourselves, I can and I am, instead of I can't and I'm not. And simply practicing gratitude by making a mental list in the morning or at night before bed, or by journaling what you're grateful for. So I hope this season that you really um, remember the reason for the season and you really start incorporating some of these things in your life to help reduce your stress. So if you have any questions, here's my contact information, uh, Lynette Long. Again, I am a licensed professional counselor. Um, that's my email that you can reach me at, um, my cell and my office phone. So if you have any questions about stress management for the holidays or really any time, you can reach me that way. So, do you have any questions? Yeah, those are holistic. Uh, so there, we're at, there's a question about holistic things to do for stress management. So um, one of the things that I love in the evening, if I'm having a difficult time relaxing, is simply chamomile tea. It is really great for stress reduction. Um, the other thing that you can do um, for someone who likes a more holistic approach is lavender oil. Lavender oil is really very soothing to the nervous system and you can just put a drop on your pillow at night and people find that it really helps um, you know, reduce headaches and it really provides a lot of um, stress relief for them. So those are a couple of things that you could add in. And obviously, you know, we didn't talk about meditation today, but meditation is another wonderful um, mechanism to reduce stress. Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate you um, joining us today. And if you have not been to this wellness center, I must say it is absolutely positively amazing and when we talked a little bit earlier about gifts um, they they have some of the most amazing classes here on painting um, and they were making some Christmas ornaments I think the last time I was here um, so if you have not checked out this center I buy I, I really really suggest that they have a state-of-the-art um, exercise room Really, there is everything here that you need for stress management. So um, I hope that you uh, will check it out. And I'm going to turn it back over to Tanessa. Thanks everyone for joining us and I hope you take the opportunity to contact Lynette if um, you have any further questions. Um, you're also welcome to reach out to me and um, hope to see you all around soon. Stay safe, stay well, and have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season.